Jesus said to his disciples, There was a rich man, and he had a steward, who was denounced to him for being wasteful with his property. He called for the man and said, What is this I hear about you? Draw me up an account of your stewardship, because you are not to be my servant any longer. Then the steward said to himself, Now that my master is taking the stewardship from me, what am I to do? Dig? I am not strong enough. Go begging? I should be too ashamed. Ah, I know what I will do to make sure that when I am dismissed from office, there will be someone to welcome me into their homes. Then he called the master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, How much do you owe my master? One hundred measures of oil, was the reply. The steward said, Here, take your bond, sit down straight away and write fifty. To another he said, And you, sir, how much do you owe? One hundred measures of wheat, was the reply. The steward said, Here, take your bond and write eighty. The master praised the dishonest steward for his astuteness. For the children of the world are more astute in dealing with their own kind than are the children of light. And so I tell you this, use money, tainted as it is, to win you friends, and thus make sure that when it fails you, they will welcome you into the tents of eternity. The one who can be trusted in little things can be trusted in great. The one who is dishonest in little things will be dishonest in great. If then you cannot be trusted with money, that tainted thing, who will trust you with genuine riches? And if you cannot be trusted with what is not yours, who will give you what is your very own? No servant can be the slave of two masters. He will either hate the first and love the second, or treat the first with respect and the second with scorn. You cannot be the slave both of God and of money. So Steve, how is this reading speaking to you? Speaks to me a lot about trust, not just trust in terms of money, but trust in many different circumstances. I even think about, uh, even at work, um, it, not necessarily to do with money, but the time you the time you give, um, how you use your time, whether it's you've been gen genuinely honest with every every hour, every minute, every second of your time at work. Um, after all, someone else is paying you for the what you're doing. Am I? Do I always give an honest day's work? And even in little things like. Um, I just think of my, uh, I have a mobile which belongs to my, my boss and uh, most of the calls I make on that are personal calls. So I always make a, a point at the end of the month to write a check out for those calls. But it would be so easy to just hand it into accounts and say pay it. It's uh, pay it from the Met Service account. But I uh, make a point of, um, point of doing that. Because I, that's a little thing, but it's a, it's a big step. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's exactly how it speaks to me too. It just reminds me of you know how human I am when I think of you know well, what I picked up on you know you know from the reading was the very last paragraph about how you can't serve two masters, and I am struggling with that because. Um, all the time I'm thinking, okay, Lord, I want to make use of my 
time while I'm down here to serve you. But then at the same time, I think of my role as a mother in my family, that most of the time I'm so caught up with my duties as a mother that I give very little time to God. And, and I struggle with that because I'm trying to balance my life so that I give, you know, most of it to God because I take the Bible literally, you know, in the readings that I, and thank goodness that, you know, Jesus gives us all these parables just to guide our, you know, our lives and, and the way we behave on, you know, in this world. And that really, you know, challenges me deep, the fact that although I'm giving my life to God in the little things that I do, but I'm sure the Lord commands a lot of me, but I seem to prioritize my family and, you know, the extended community and almost all the things I do. And that's the struggle that I, so I wonder if you can just share with me how you prioritize. Well, I, like you, I feel um, my time is squeezed too, uh, with even though my family, the youngest is now 20, there's still demands, demands on us. And uh, there is so, so much uh, I can fritter, fritter away my time on. But I always try and make sure that I can get up early in the morning. And I know I function better first thing in the morning. so. I like to give some time to God at that time and I feel it's really a, it's a great way to start the day to be able to spend even if it's half an hour um, just either reading or praying uh, just reflecting uh, and it, it always gives me a good a good start um, to each day whereas I find if I the days that I don't get started in the right way. I find the days tend to race and sometimes you feel like it, it's getting out of control, just uh, things happening so quickly or things happening and you don't feel you're, you're up with mm -hmm. the play and uh, I don't That's like right. those days. I know. I really um, admire the way these parables, you know, are read to us, you know, at the Sunday Masses because it just gives me time to ponder on how my life is going. And, you know, when the Bible talks about righteousness and then I'm thinking, oh my God, I seem to do the opposite most mm. of the time. Because, you know, I'm like the, the untouched steward. I'm thinking, yes, we're meant to be stewards and God gave us a gift so that we can, you know, use it fruitfully. And it just scares me. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not... Perfect, and I know I've always got something to work on every day. Mm -hmm.